This is going to be titled, Who Are You Calling Crazy? But if you're a Christian, then the world is going to think you're weird, strange, or crazy. And if you're a Bible-believing Christian, then people will think you're crazy, and even a good portion of other Christians will think you're crazy. And if you're a Bible-believing Christian with an open mind, then people will think you are an outright mental patient if they knew what you believed. Many Christians have opened up their mind to the idea of conspiracies. Not everything is as it seems. Not everything is okay. There are some things going on that we don't know about. There is evil and darkness going on behind closed doors that's beyond our comprehension, beyond our wildest dream. Before I was saved, the conspiracy theories seemed like fairy tales. However, now that I'm a Bible believer, they seem to line up with the Bible. For example, verses like Psalms chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So if the kings and rulers of this world set themselves against the Lord back in those days, do you think things have gotten any better? Because the Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So I don't doubt some of the major conspiracies about the government. I don't doubt that the devil has power to give out power with permission from God. I don't doubt that he would give out power to those who will worship him and commit acts of evil to get power from him. Because in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 9, the devil says to Jesus Christ, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. That's what the devil said to our Lord. But the Lord was much smarter than any man. Much smarter than the wicked king Manasseh. Who in Second Chronicles 33, 6, it says, And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. So if Manasseh was killing children and dabbling into witchcraft back then, what do you think the rulers are doing today? I don't doubt the Clinton pedophile accusations. I don't doubt that there is a place called Bohemian Grove where men in higher up positions go to commit pedophilia and worship a statue of a 40-foot owl. Because if the men all through the Old Testament were going to groves and worshiping idols and graven images then what makes you think they aren't doing it today? But there was a lot of men in the Bible that people thought were crazy. In Acts 26, 24, Festus says with a loud voice to Paul, he says, Thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. Remember that verse? When Festus said with a loud voice, Paul... Thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. This is because when you speak on certain things like conspiracies, people will say that you are beside yourself or crazy. But isn't it funny how men in the Bible were called crazy? In Mark three twenty one through 22, it says, And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself and the scribes which came down from jerusalem said he hath beelzebub and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils they believe that the lord jesus christ 
was beside himself and that he had a devil. Maybe you say something about the Twin Towers and there being a controlled demolition. Maybe you say something about that other building that went down, that Building 7 or whatever. And the average man says, you're crazy. They think everything is okay. Especially in the South, they are so hypnotized by country music that they think everyone is as sweet as grandma and life is about sitting on grandma's porch with a cherry Coke and a barbecue stain on your white t-shirt, eating fried chicken after church in a water tower town, and that it's all right to have a few beers because you go to church on Sunday. That's what country music does to the brain. Makes you think everything is okay, everybody is a good old boy, and that there isn't a battle or an unseen evil and presence going on. When you speak against anything, the blind leaders of the blind will automatically jump up and accuse you of being closed-minded and evil, but they're the ones that are closed-minded. Uh, John 10, 20 says, And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? So that's what they're saying about Jesus Christ. And maybe the devil has got you tricked into thinking that everything is normal, but the normal you think you're living is actually the fairy tale and the way that things really are will match up with how the Bible says they are. And everything is lining up for it to wind up, for it to be over. There is a funny story about David in 1 Samuel 21, 12 through 13, it says, And David, it says, And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them and veined himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down in his beard. Here, David looks crazy. He's pretending to be crazy. But the devil has it fixed to where when a person just believes the Bible, then they're seen like David is seen right here. People think you're crazy. And I remember as a kid watching the satanic show The Simpsons, and the way they portray Christianity makes Christians look like morons. And even the show Family Guy with an atheist producer makes our Lord Jesus Christ and Christians seem as if we're crazy. So the world already thinks you're crazy. Verses like Hosea 9, 7 says, The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad for the multitude of thine iniquity and the great hatred. So what do they think about your preacher? They think he's a fool? And they say the spiritual man is mad. But the Lord has raised up a bunch of money-hungry idiots like Oral Roberts and T.D. Jakes and Joseph Prince to make a lot of lost people think that the preachers are money-hungry. And this is a judgment on a nation. The Lord allowed this to happen as a judgment on us because this country has rejected Bible truth but there are still real Bible-believing Christians who are not money-hungry and are sincere Bible-believers. But the devil, the Lord allowed the devil to trick lost people into believing that Christians are just crazy and money-hungry. But there's characters in the Bible like Noah. And 2 Peter 2.5 it says, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So imagine being Noah in a world full of wickedness. It's never rained before because a mist went up from the ground to water the whole earth. And you're out with a street preaching sign saying, The rain is coming. Don't miss the boat. 
He looked like a crazy conspiracy theorist, no doubt. And I remember as a kid watching the movie Independence Day and the guy who knew something big was coming was seen as crazy. And that's the way you'll look if you stand up for the Bible. And if you're willing to, to look further into things, if you're a Christian, you know something big is coming. The Lord is coming back with ten thousands of his saints. So talk about an invasion. And then there's men in the Bible like Abraham. It says in Romans 4.18, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Abraham believed something crazy. He believed the Lord would give him a child in his old age, and the idea was so crazy that they named the boy Isaac, which means laughter. Because Abraham originally laughed at the idea, but believed God anyway, who against hope, believed in hope. There's all kinds of things like this in the Bible. But a lot of Christians, they don't want to believe the strange things in the Bible. They want everything to be just like it is in their life today, in their water tower town. But it's not. There's some weird and strange things going on. Some evil and dark things going on that you only think are in movies. And Christians today are so... They're so against believing anything supernatural or strange that if the rapture took place right now, they wouldn't even believe it was happening if they were rising up in the air. They would think they're dreaming or something. But if you're a Christian, then at times the Lord is going to have going to have you believe some crazy things in the book of acts in chapter 17 18, 18 through 20 it says then certain philosoph philosophers of the epicureans and of the stoics encountered him and some said what will this babbler say other some he seemeth to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them jesus and the resurrection, and they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. This is the reaction to what men believed about what Paul was preaching. They thought he was mad and teaching some strange doctrines. And then in Acts twenty four fourteen it says, But... This I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. So did you see that? They thought Paul was a heretic simply because he believed what God said. And today if you believe the King James Bible is perfect from cover to cover, then they'll say you're divisive. They'll say you're in a King James only cult. They'll say you're closed-minded, and if you're a Bible believer, then you believe what God said has been preserved without error, even uh, from the original copies all the way until forever. It wasn't just perfect in the originals, it's still perfect. To believe that it's been preserved until now to many is a crazy thought, and that is strange, you know. How could a, a certain writing be preserved all the way from 4,000 years ago until now. But we have a big God who can do that. And if you believe that it's been preserved, then you believe in something supernatural. Genesis 19.14 says, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place. For the Lord will destroy this city, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when you mention a coming judgment, people are going to think you're crazy. Just like they thought Paul was, or I mean Lot here, was just mocking. Many times if a preacher is preaching the Bible, they might even ask if he's kidding or doing some type of comedy act because their mind is so far from the Bible that they can't comprehend anything but the life the devil has painted in the movies and in the music. 
in Second Peter 3, 3-4, three through four, says, Doing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. People are like, if all this Bible stuff is true, why is life just continuing to go on like it always has? And they'll scoff. In Jude 17 and 18, it says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts you're going to be mocked for believing some crazy things first corinthians 2 14 says but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned the natural man has no idea what you're talking about when you speak real bible truth he thinks you're a nut he thinks you're just way out in left field somewhere a lost man can understand truth. Because Second Corinthians 4.4 4 says, And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. They are blinded. But when you get saved and exposed to the truth, it's like you can't unsee the truth. Remember the movie They Live? where the guy puts the glasses on and he's then able to see who is really human and who ain't. It's like that. When you get saved, you get the blinders off your eyes and you have some discernment. There's a lot of things that the average lost person just don't see. But then when you get saved, it's like blinders are taken off your eyes and you can see the harm and the evil in something and then verses like second timothy 3 6 through 7 says for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth so we have some evil men that creep into houses openly satanic Women like Taylor Swift is a filthy minister of the devil, pushing the LGBT stuff on the young girls. Drake is a filthy instrument of the devil, Jay-Z. The women on all these talk shows like Ellen, Steve Harvey, they creep into houses and help blind the people. All these country singers, all these entertainers. There is a conspiracy behind the music. It's to demoralize people. That's why it was invented. Look up why gangster rap itself was invented. To cause crime. Those rappers that are supposed gangster rappers aren't even really gangsters. Uh, the rapper Rick Ross, he's not even... That's not even his real name and he's copying a famous drug dealer with that name. He was actually like a, a sec security guard in a prison before he was a rapper or something like that. But these people that you look up to, these evil men, aren't what they say they are. And they have a motive behind what they're doing, and that's to demoralize you and take you to hell. And 1 Kings 22, 8 says, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man... Micaiah the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. So today if you preach and teach against sodomy and abortion and the music or any immorality, they are quick to claim hate speech and intolerance. And they'll hate you just like they hated this man named Micaiah. But when you read Revelation, you notice the church of Ephesus is commended for their intolerance. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 2 says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how ca thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. 
So the Lord commends this church for their discernment and their intolerance. And that's some things greatly lacking among Christians today is discernment and intolerance. And something greatly lacking is the belief in the supernatural, the belief in the stranger things of the scriptures. It's really lacking today to the open-mindedness to something that you've never heard. It's very conceited, very arrogant Christians today who think if someone tells them something and yet they've never heard it before or it sounds a little crazy that they say it can't be true, showing that they deep down think they already know everything. But for those of you who don't believe that there's some strange things in the Bible, here's some strange things you do believe, but you just don't realize it. For example, Adam and Eve got here without a mother or a father. Men in Genesis lived to be hundreds of years old, up to 900 and something years old. That's a strange thing. Moses parted the Red Sea, turned his rod into a serpent, brought all those plagues, talked to a burning bush. Elijah was caught up in a chariot, flown by horses of fire, and went up to the third heaven. Uh, the children of Israel's shoes didn't wax old on their feet for 40 years. The apostles could drink any deadly thing, pick up serpents without being wounded, speak in tongues, heal the sick, cast out devils. Uh, you probably believe in some form of spirit world like angels and, and unclean spirits. You believe the Lord is coming back in a rapture when your body will change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. You believe in a lot of strange things, but those things aren't strange to you anymore because you've, you've been taught them and you've heard them. You believe all these strange things, yet you won't believe other things simply because you're weary of believing something you have never heard or because it sounds maybe a little far-fetched and implying you think you already know everything that there is to know. But I think this is one of the biggest problems for Christians today is they refuse to believe or even look into something they never heard or something that sounds crazy. And another problem is they refuse to believe or look into any belief that goes against what they have been taught their entire life. But then you don't want to take it too far the other way and just believe every conspiracy theory that shows up. Because there's a lot of conspiracy theories that's just a bunch of bull. And there's a lot of people who go around and think that everybody's a Freemason and part of some secret society they think everything's Illuminati. They think every time that a celebrity dies that it's a blood sacrifice for the Illuminati. You don't want to go too far with it. But you don't want to go too far the other way and say that everybody's crazy, everybody's an idiot, everybody's a, a fool if they believe that there's some dark things going on. And I don't really want to get into all the conspiracy th theory stuff. I'm just trying to get you to realize that this is a dark, sick, perverted world. Paul calls it a present evil world. Jesus says he's not of this world. Uh, all through the Bible, the, the men of God were speaking against the world. And the world hasn't gotten any better. It's, if Paul says it's the present evil world, back then when he was here, what is it today? It's a present evil world, and there's some messed up things going on. It's a, that's why you need to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You need to be sure you're saved. And Paul tells us plainly the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And if you believe that, simple gospel, you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So you're a sinner and that's why you needed a savior. And he died on the cross shedding his blood to pay for all those sins you've committed. 
The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So all you have to do to be saved is come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel.